There's no way. There's no way on earth I am going to babysit some Hollywood rump wrangler, okay? I'm in the middle of a murder investigation. Moss, you don't have a vote in this. The 1980s and the 1990s were a great time for character actors. Think about it. You had guys like Gene Hackman, Brian Dennehy, Morgan Freeman. They weren't necessarily considered superstars, but they could kind of move back and forth between playing colorful supporting roles and leads in movies without too much trouble. And people love them. One of the best character actors of the era is a guy whose movies sadly don't get a lot of play nowadays, James Woods. I don't know, maybe it's something about my personality, what do you think? Hey, up yours, asshole! I mean, if you think about his career, from 1983's Videodrome up until about 1999's Any Given Sunday, he really had an amazing run. I mean, there was Videodrome, there was Salvador, and there's this week's movie that I'm going to be talking about on the best movie you never saw. The Hard Way, in which he co-stars Michael J. Fox and is directed by John Badham and was kind of James Woods' attempt at becoming kind of an action star. And you know what? It actually kind of works. A cop like you showing me the streets. The two of us comparing stars. I have had a couple of tough scrapes myself, you know. eyes. That's Ray Kazanoff. That's the face of a man who's been to the edge. That's the face of a man who's, who's tasted fear. Now, James Woods isn't necessarily the most popular guy on the internet anymore. And in fact, he seems to be mostly known for being a Twitter blowhard. It's D for drive, shitheads! Then the great character actor we all know him to be. The Hard Way, in my opinion, is one of his most underrated and effective films. It came along at a great time in James Woods' career, and in fact, about a year later, James Woods would actually satirize the plot of this movie on a classic episode of The Simpsons when he goes undercover at the Quickie Mart in order to learn what it's like to be a convenience store clerk. Freaking no good mother Jeez. It's a play on the movie's kind of intriguing premise, which puts a spin on the classic buddy cop movie formula. So James Woods in the film plays a New York cop named Moss, who's after a serial killer named The Party Crasher, played by a bleached blonde and very muscle-bound Stephen Lang. He's injured in the line of duty, but his antics make the news where he's noticed by a big-time Hollywood movie star named Nick Lang, played by Michael J. Fox. I hate that guy. Now, Nick Lang is kind of sick with being this box office pretty boy, and he wants to be taken seriously as a movie star and an actor. You don't want me to grow up. The studio doesn't want me to grow up. I'M THE ONLY ONE WHO WANTS ME TO GROW UP! So, he wants to make this gritty cop movie and decides that he's gonna study what it's like to be a cop by being under the wing of... Who do you think? James Woods' Moss. Who, wouldn't you know it, does not want any part in the deal but is forced to by his starstruck captain who is played by Delroy Lindo. Not if you tied my tongue to your tailpipe and drove me 80 miles an hour naked across a field of broken glass. No, no. Is this about the actor? So this movie is actually directed by one of the most underrated guys from that era, and his name is John Badham. Now, I know what a lot of you may be thinking, who is John Badham? But back in the 1980s, this guy had a great run of films. I mean, Saturday Night Fever, 1977, one of the best movies of that era, I think. It's a classic. Then he did Blue Thunder, War Games, Stakeout, another Stakeout. Well, okay, maybe another Stakeout isn't that good, but I mean Stakeout. Stakeout's great. And I, he made another movie just before this that I kind of like too called Bird on a Wire, which paired Mel Gibson and Goldie Hawn. It was kind of an interesting action comedy. And in fact, that was the genre that I think was really his forte because John Badham did something interesting. His movies would be funny, but the comedy would more or less emerge from the fact that his characters were often, you know, mismatched and the humor in the films would emerge from that. Let's get on the same page here, okay? I'm sensing that you're not completely happy with this situation. <laughs> Before we continue with our video, here's a reminder to click the store tab on any of our Joe Blow channels and browse our collection of the latest and freshest designs in our merch store. Go get you some. The action in these movies was usually dead serious. And I mean, if you watch even a movie like Stakeout, which is ostensibly a comedy, it has really good action scenes and is kind of intense at times. The Hard Way probably puts the emphasis more on action than any of his other films, but it's a great one. In fact, I'd say that the action scenes in The Hard Way are surprisingly potent, with Woods slimmed down for a shot at being an action star, and he makes for a convincing and intense hero. 
The same thing goes for Fox's Nick Lang, who never really becomes a joke. Sure, he's a kind of a weakling when the movie starts, but as it goes on, he becomes a little bit tougher and more heroic, with him getting a great action sequence where he pretends to be totally unhinged in a very Mel Gibson-like fashion when he's taken hostage by the party crasher. This scene ends in kind of a cool car chase where Fox is pretending to be completely insane and Lang is absolutely terrified sitting in the back seat and some vehicular mayhem ensues. I actually always really enjoyed this scene and you know it's kind of a nice glimpse at what Michael J. Fox might have been like had he ever gone the action movie route. It's my life. One of the other things besides Woods and Fox is that Stephen Lang is great in this film as the party crasher. Hello there. It's me again. Well, what can I say? I'm about to crash another party. I really like his kind of menacing look and he's very intense and completely insane. He looks like a capable physical threat for both guys and I mean, I almost feel like Fidi Alvarez maybe saw this movie when he was casting Don't Breathe and maybe that's why he ended up starring in the film because Stephen Lang really is memorable in this. Indeed, this movie is very well cast. While Woods probably isn't anyone's idea of an action hero given how his fast-talking nature always had a narcissistic, villainous edge to it, Casting him against type here really works. Moss is supposed to be an insecure, macho mess of a man with him trying to woo a divorcee, played by the lovely Annabelle Ciora. I used to have a speech impediment, you know, I couldn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> whose daughter, played by a very young Christina Ricci, absolutely hates him. The nearly psychotic vigor he attacks his duties with make him a pretty interesting lead, and the fact that he's not an invincible Superman makes him all the more appealing. We live this job. It's something we are. That's something we do. His attitude is what makes the film, in my opinion. Michael J. Fox is just as good, even if, I have to say, this is definitely James Woods' movie through and through. <laughs> They're in a little early there. Again, Nick Lang is wimpy at first, but he doesn't become too much of a joke. Fox brings some heart to the role, such as a heartbreaking moment when he thinks that Moss has taken the rap for him on a shooting, but he's really just being set up as a punchline, and it's a way for them to get him out of the precinct while they all focus on the real police work. You weren't ever here, you understand? You were never here. I was never here. Their chemistry is pretty good, with Woods noting many times while promoting the film that he actually found it very challenging playing a character that's supposed to be annoyed by Fox, as he found him very likable and quite charming as a co-star. He doesn't belong here. He belongs in Never Never Land with his personal trainer and his maid and his God knows who all, the guy who wipes his ass after he pinches off his daily loaf, okay? Indeed, Fox's likability may have been what doomed this movie at the box office, as in 1991, of course, he was coming off of the Back to the Future films, Doc Hollywood, Secret of My Success. I mean, these weren't particularly gritty films, although he definitely did try to stretch a few times, but the results usually weren't very good. I've disgraced my whole family. Oh, the hell you did. Not funny, okay? This is not a funny moment in my life. Bright Light's Big City was widely considered a bit of a disaster, and he did do a really good movie called Casualties of War in 1989 for director Brian De Palma, but the movie was completely stolen by his co-star in it, Sean Penn, who kind of chewed the scenery mercilessly. Same thing kind of happens in the hard way. I mean, when you put a low-key guy like Fox up against these powerhouse character actors, he can't help but get a little bit dominated by them, right? Hey, if you can't trust your partner, who can you trust? As a kid, I remember really being excited for The Hard Way, even though the trailers definitely made it look more like a comedy than an action film. In fact, I was surprised when I tried to go see this movie in theaters and saw that it was rated R. My parents didn't care, they were pretty laid back and I could have definitely gone to see it. Only problem is, the sucker working behind the ticket window didn't want to let me in because, oh well, I was only 10 years old. But hey, I wanted to see my action movies and they wouldn't let me so I had to wait for this thing to come out on home video. And everybody knows VHS is not as good as seeing a movie in theaters, so I've always been a little bit bitter about missing the hard way in theaters. Thank you very much, cashier at the Point Claire Plaza in Montreal. I guess a lot of people got shut out of seeing this movie because it didn't do very well in theaters. It only made about 25 million domestically. That said, it was actually a hit overseas with it more than doubling its lackluster box office. It also became a smash on home video and then on TV with it oddly bypassing HBO to have a TV debut in a highly censored version on NBC, which I hated as a kid because all the F-bombs were taken out. Watching it now, I think the film holds up quite well. It's stylishly directed by John Badham and the supporting cast is really good. I mean, you got an early role for Delroy Lindo as Woods' starstruck captain and you got LL Cool J as a cop. Nikki, baby, you sharpshooter, we heard about you. <laughs> 
Now here's a funny story. LL Cool J wasn't really supposed to be in this movie a lot. He was just supposed to have a walk on because they wanted the rights to his song, Mama Said Knock You Out. So what happened was, as soon as they got LL Cool J in front of the camera, they realized that the guy was very charismatic and seemed to be a natural. The camera just loved him and he had a real kind of easy going way with the dialogue. So they added a bunch and now he's one of the co-stars of the film. Funny enough, all these years later, People, I think, mostly know LL Cool J as an actor rather than one of the biggest rappers of all time, which is what he was back in 1991. Interesting note, the movie also co-stars Luis Guzman, and it was one of three movies he made that have the word way in the title for Universal Pictures. Gee, Moss, we gotta stop meeting like this, you know. There was The Hard Way, there was Carlito's Way, which is a masterpiece, and there's The Cowboy Way, well, which is not a masterpiece. But if Universal was making a movie with the title, had something to do with Way back in the 1990s, they had to find a role for Luis Guzman, I guess. While some, understandably, may not be in a rush to dig into this movie due to the fact that James Woods just simply rubs people the wrong way these days, I think it holds up really well, and I had a lot of fun revisiting it, and I hope that you all give it a shot here on The Best Movie You Never Saw. Make sure to let me know in the comments what you thought of The Hard Way. Is it a movie that you've seen before? Is this the first you've heard of it? Do you think it's worth being in the best movie you never saw? And most importantly, what would you like to see featured next? I look forward to reading all your comments. No, no, whatever you do, never call me. Do you understand? <laughs>